Welcome to our first ever Video Toolbox Talk. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to introduce this video, which we believe is a new and innovative way of sharing key messages with the business. As part of 2020, we will continually strive to improve our performance in health and safety. We believe that the ability to share messages in a consistent fashion is fundamental to this approach, and we hope that you will find this video useful. Enjoy watching the video, and it would be great to have your feedback. Objects that we commonly need to lift during our works may vary. They include pipes, fittings, road plates and palletised items. There are a number of things we need to think about relating to the load which might affect our lifting operation. The load might be very large or very small, heavy or relatively light. It might be an awkward shape or have sharp edges that could make attaching the lifting equipment awkward. There may be a possibility of the load shifting during transit. An object may have specific points where it's designed to be lifted from, such as eye bolts on the fittings or anchor points on the road plates. Follow any best practice guidance for the load being lifted. For example, pipes should be secured with two straps wherever possible to ensure stability. Some fittings may be delivered with manufacturer's lifting eyes still attached. These must not be used. Once the load has been considered, the next thing we need to look at is what equipment is most suitable to lift the item. We need to consider how the item is secured and suspended from our machine. Webbing straps made of a nylon polyester mix are commonly used for lifting pipes. They're strong, convenient, economical and don't damage the load. For each use, each strap must be inspected to ensure it's safe. Things to look out for include acid or caustic burns, any chemical contamination, signs of melting or charring, holes, tears, cuts or snags, any broken or worn stitching, excessive abrasive wear or any knots in any part of the strap. Studies have shown that a one centimetre cut in a three inch wide strap can reduce the brake strength by up to 40%. If any of those issues are spotted, the strap should be destroyed and disposed of. Another option that may be appropriate includes the use of chains. Chains provide a strong and flexible link between the load and the machine and are commonly used alongside shackles and hooks. When selecting the equipment you will use, it's important to consider the safe working load. This will be shown on the tag attached to the item which should match the examination certificate for that particular accessory. If either of these is missing or out of date, the equipment should not be used. The retest date will be shown on the certificate. As well as the statutory six monthly inspection, any item of plant or lifting equipment needs to be inspected weekly. This should be recorded on a weekly inspection form held on the Clancy Hub. The requirements of the actual lift will determine the selection of equipment and machinery that we use. Factors that need to be considered include the distance and the route of travel, rotation of the load, how many people are needed for the operation, including a banksman and plant controller. When selecting the best machine for the task, all the factors we've discussed so far must be taken into account. It may be that the forklift, a grab or an excavator could be the most appropriate. With forklifts, the load must be lifted from a properly designed lifting point, not by hooking chains onto the forks. Forklifts with telescopic handlers should avoid travelling with suspended loads due to the high risk of instability. When using excavators, the bucket must be removed in order to improve visibility, reduce the weight being lifted, and to avoid snagging the chains. This cannot be achieved if the excavator is deemed unsuitable for lifting. Grabs must be operated on firm level ground, and the outrig is properly deployed, and the tyres correctly inflated. So I, I can remember on a job a couple of years ago when we were working to install a, a really big strategic water main, and we were lifting these three tonne trench boxes into position using a 21 tonne machine. And what happened was because the site team had chosen a clevis hook with a locking castle nut that doesn't allow rotation when it's put under strain, uh, that put excessive strain on the bow shackle, which caused it to fail. And it shot off, uh, we never found it, and the trench box dropped about a metre to the ground. And bearing in mind this thing weighs about three tonnes, we were pretty lucky that no one was injured in that incident. So that really shows the importance of making sure that you plan your lifts properly and select the correct pieces of kit. Because different lifting accessories can look very similar. Finally, it's important to consider the surrounding environment which may increase difficulty of the lift. Different ground conditions or weather conditions can cause instability. This is particularly the case with soft ground or when the ground type changes on the route of the lift. Before any lifting activity is undertaken, an exclusion zone must be put in place and maintained throughout the duration of the lift. No person should enter the exclusion zone without permission from the plant controller. Never work under a suspended load. There is always potential accidental operation of the controls if loose fitting clothing is being worn. 
This must be avoided in order to reduce the likelihood of baggy sleeves catching on the operating levers. The machine operator may have restricted lines of sight and relies upon its colleagues to operate the machine safely. Having considered all of these factors, you're now ready to carry out your lift. All lifts must be planned and carried out by suitably trained people in accordance with our management procedures. Remember, when carrying out your risk assessment, always consider the characteristics of the load, which equipment is most appropriate, and that is well within its inspection date. The nature of the task will affect the choice of equipment and machine. Make sure you consider the physical features of the working area, management of exclusion zones, any obstacles that may obstruct the lift, or the lines of sight during the operation. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video.